Hello. I hope you all are having a nice time at Europscon so far. Uh, welcome to my talk. Thanks for being here, uh, giving me a portion of your time. My talk is on observability with GitOps, um, specifically Flux, because that's the project I work on. Just a little bit about myself. My name is Somtochi Onyekwere. I'm a developer experience engineer at Weaveworks, I'm based in Nigeria. Um, I'm a Flux maintainer, and I love open source. And you can connect with me on Twitter and GitHub at Somtochi Ama. That's my handle. Uh, so today, OK, um, Flux is at GitOps. We have the Flux booked and a couple of talks. So you can scan this so that you can know our times. So you can always come by, by the Flux boot or the Weaveworks book, boot. Weaveworks is the company that created Flux that I work for. Uh, they also are the creator of other open source projects like Flaga, Cortex, and a bunch of them. So yeah, you could always scan the QR code if you want to reach out to us, come by and say hi. So at the start of the GitOps con, they already went through this, so I'll just be running through it really just for anyone who is not familiar. Um, so we have the GitOps principles. Uh, your system is described in Git and is version controlled. So basically, Flux sits at number three and four, where it is it, the software agents residing in your cluster, continuously reconciling the states you've defined in Git on your cluster. So basically, you store your YAMLs in Git. Um, Flux, which is a set of controllers, sits on your cluster and pulls your changes and applies them. So Flux basically is a set of controllers. It uh, extends Kubernetes. It uses custom resource definitions and operators. So I'll just move through quickly what each controller does, uh, just so we're familiar. So the source controller is, it pulls the YAMLs that were stored in Git, not just Git actually. It doesn't have to be. It's just the most popular version control system. You could start, store it in S3 buckets, um, OCI repositories, I saw the talk before break, was on OCI, so recently we've added um, supports for storing your manifest in an OCI image, and Flux is able to pull that. And So the customized and Helm controllers are what I would refer to as appliers. Um, customized and Helms, Helm are, are popular in like the Kubernetes ecosystem. So basically, if you, if you if you, if you had Helm chat, if you had the source controller pull Helm chats or Helm repositories, the Helm controller would be what would apply it on your cluster. Or customized controllers, we customize, if you just have plain, plain YAMLs, so that works. Uh, the notification controller, which is sort of like what I would say the observability part, which is what we're going to be looking at in the talk, is what sort of gives of notifications to you. It supports a bunch of providers. It can send notifications to Slack, Discord, MS Teams, there are a bunch of them. Then lastly, the image reflector controller and image automation controller, they are able to monitor your container registries and update your YAMLs in Git when it sees a new tag. So it writes back to Git. So of course, we are all familiar with the benefits of GitOps. You know, it helps us to iterate faster, deploy faster. It gives us a commit log. But in all of that, it means there's sort of like, when you remove the human component in all this, all this system, which of, of course makes it faster and more reliable, it increases the need for observability, right? You need to know what's happening and what, when something goes wrong so that you can quickly step in and fix something, right? So um, you need visibility, you need to be able to monitor these systems. Um, observability involves logs, traces, metrics. Um, Flux, of course, because Flux applies things for you, of course, you need to know if something is wrong, if it's successful, did it, was it able to um, manage it successfully? So it strives to provide these things for you so, so that you have insight into what it's doing on the cluster. So basically what I'll just be showcasing here is the notification controller, structured logging, um, Q, the Q, all, um, all of Flux controllers aligns with controller runtime login, um, so it's easy to know, like, you can easily ingest and filter the logs. And we also export Prometheus metrics. Of course, um, Prometheus is one of the most popular 
observability solutions in the Kubernetes ecosystem. Um, we also have like Grafana dashboards for you know visuals, you'd want to see what's happening quite quickly on the dashboards. So um, there's a link to the demo I'm about to, I've, I've included a link to the demo I'm about to show, um, just a quick run through of what's going to, ha what's in the repository. I've already set it up because of time. I'll be walking through the setup, but it's basically already done. Um, so there's a Terraform controller for spinning up a GKE cluster. You could, um, but th this, de yeah, this demo works with any Kubernetes cluster. Um, we also use Pixie at the end. You don't have to, but Pixie doesn't work with Docker desktop and hence won't work on a kind cluster. We have the clusters, um, clusters folder that contains, this is where the repository that Flux would, would watch and apply on the cluster. And we have the infra folder, which contains YAMLs for different things we're going to be installing on the cluster um, additions like Tailscale, Pixie, Cube Prometheus stack. So I had like slides prepared for people, someone who after this talk wants to go step by step. So if you want to go through the whole thing, you can always do that. So of course, um, just like I said, observability is important. We don't want to, of course, you want to do a git push. You just want to do a good push and have your things applied, but you want to know, did it get deployed? Is anything wrong? So that's basically the basis. Um, so with the notification controller, we have various providers that you can send notifications to. Um, they are not limited to what's listed here. There are actually a lot more. There's Discord, Slack, Google Chat, MS Teams, and a lot more. Um, you could also have a commit status notification sent to the Git providers like GitHub, GitLab, you know, that green or red check that is beside the commit to show if it deployed successfully. That might also be helpful. That might be what suits your need. So yeah, time for the demo. Uh, I'm just going to, mostly going to be showing YAML, so bear with me. Uh, this is GitOps. <laughs> so uh, I've already so run. Touchy. Sorry, could you um, increase your screen okay. size there? Thanks. Is that working? One second. Okay. So check. Okay, so I have the okay, let me set up my slides, sorry. Um please probably okay. Yeah, so the Terraform folder contain it creates GKE cluster and um, I'll be tr I'll be sort of showcasing some features of Flux in the process of setting up notifications just for someone who hasn't come across it. So we're also setting up GCP KMS rings. Um, basically this will be used to encrypt secrets in, the, they're like the secrets that we're going to create in Flux. Um, you don't want to store your, secret, your bare secrets in the cluster, we'd want to encrypt them so that they are safe while doing GitOps. So yeah, you could Terraform apply what we have here. Sorry, let me just shift this around, yeah. Okay, so I've run Flux Bootstrap to install Flux on the cluster to um, the cluster repository, and we have the infra folder that contains Kube Prometheus stack. Um, just a quick example of what we've done to set up the notifications. So with the notifications, we have um, a couple of CRDs for the notification controllers. We have the alerts the alert CRD and the provider. So basically, alerts helps you to, to um, pick which of the Flux objects you want to monitor, right? Um, so this is basically what it looks like. So yeah, you're basically telling it that you want to um, gather events from, so basically when the controllers do something, they send out events to the notification controllers so you don't have to, if you don't create this, nothing happens, right? It's receiving the events, but you haven't instructed it to forward it. So this basically tells it, 
um, to watch um, kind, um, um, different kinds like the Git repository, OCI, customization, home repository. So you could specify a particular namespace or you could specify a particular name, but the wildcard tells it like any, any, any of these kinds, regardless of the name, I would want a lot from them. So you also have to reference a provider, right? Um, since it can send to a bunch of different providers, you have to tell you which of them is going to send out the, the events to. So we are creating <coughs> a Slack provider, a type of Slack, and we are ref referencing a secret Slack URL. So you could also, you don't have to make it a secret, you could also add an address here. If you're, you don't think your Slack URLs are super secrets, you could add the address here. But if you push it to Git, um, I've noticed that, especially for a public repository, um, GitHub and Slack have this thing where they invalidate webhooks. So what I'm doing is I'm creating a secret. You can reference it as a secret too. So what I've done is, this is what my secret looks like. Um, that This is because I have encrypted it with the key ring, the crypto key that I created with GCP KMS. So basically, SOPS is going to, um, I've also included this um, modification to my Flux deployment. I'm telling it that it should decrypt using the SOPS provider. And I don't know if anyone here is familiar with um, workload identity where you don't have to, you don't have to do your, um, give, like download a service account key. You basically just annotate the service, this, um, the, serv the Kubernetes service account with that of the service accounts on GCP and it's able to make calls. So I created the cluster with workload identity enabled so that it's easy. So basically you don't have to do the whole things with keys. So decryption works with not just KMS on Flux. Decryption on Flux doesn't just work with KMS, but it works with like the popular cloud providers like AWS, um, Azure Key Vault. And even if you don't want, if you'd like to manage, sorry, if you'd like to manage your keys yourself, you could use GPG H. You would you would instead put in a secret ref here so that Flux knows what key to use and decrypts the secret. Okay. So can I make any changes? Okay. I'm going to I think that's most of it for us. So this if you are using a different type, this would change basically to reflect what you have. So I'm going to quickly create an app just so that we are able to get some notifications. Um, so we could see that the alerts have already applied it before now and they are initialized. So I'm just going to do this quickly. I'm creating, um, this is Stefan's pod info repository, it's pretty popular. So he has created an OCI image with the manifest to deploy it. So basically I'm telling Flux to pull the manifest from the OCI image and this would apply it on the cluster. Okay, I think we're good. Or was it already created? Hmm. I see. Yeah. Okay, so it was already created. Um, so I'm just going to put in an error there just so that we get something. Okay, we should, um, so because Flux reconciles at a particular interval, right, we'd have to um, force the, because of the demo, we would have to force, um, force the reconcile. So this is uh, the VS Code extension. Um, sometimes we have people who say, oh, they, they are fine with GitOps, but, you know, they want developers to take control of their deployment of their app, but they don't want them, don't, don't want to have them, like, interface with YAMLs and stuff. So this is a great way. There's, there's a feature coming to allow people to create, to basically have fields where they can fill in and create Git sources. So if your developers don't want to have to deal with YAMLs or they're not familiar with Kubernetes, you could basically have them fill in the fields. So I'm going to reconcile um, the Flux system customization so that it can pull the most rich of the Flux system Git repository. So, oh, we're getting some notifications here. 
Right, so basically, this is what we want, right? If something is not working, uh, it's unable to get. So basically, this is what we want. If something is not working, okay, yeah, because it's, it's, not, it's not right, right? We didn't put in the right thing. If something is not working, we would want to get some alerts that say, oh, hey, you need to check this out. So you could configure it to whatever, like different resources to different Slack. Like maybe you want to section it out by teams. So you want maybe um, alerts from a particular namespace to go to a particular team. So you could create two different provider URLs. So I'm just going to resolve this so that we sort of get the notification that it's working okay. And we would trigger the reconcile uh, here. So another thing, uh, I'm, not, I'm not showing you here, but another thing the notification controller does is that it allows you to define, like receive something called receivers, right? You could define a, you could create a receiver and it will create a unique URL for that, for it, so you could if, if, if you have a service load balancer like that is exposed out, out of the closet, you could give that to GitHub, right? So that whenever you make the push, instead of waiting for Flux's reconciliation interval, it would, instead of like, as soon as you make the push, GitHub sends like a, a post request to the notification controller and then it will trigger the reconcile for you. So you don't have to like um, do this all over. So yeah, this should be working fine now. I'm just going to... Okay. This is OCI. The extension is having some issues. Yeah, so it's stored. We could see that it has stored it okay here. Um, yes, so it sent us an update. It wasn't working here, but we're able to receive an update. So sometimes the notification controller might not be what you're looking for, um, or it might not be insufficient. It's not a fully built out observability solutions. So of course, um, Flux exports what we call Prometheus. We, we're, we're, most of us are familiar with Prometheus metrics. So at a particular endpoint, so that if you want to script them and get more visibility into what's happening, you can. Um, so I have installed Prometheus stack. It's a Helm chart that bundles Prom Operator and Grafana, an alert manager too. So um, this is where it is, Prometheus stack. So I'm basically telling Flux to install, install the Helm release Prometheus stack, um, giving it some values. I'm giving it the Slack URL from a secret um, so you could provides, um, just like your, your Helm values, you could provide it from secrets, config map, Flux, um, Flux allows you to do that. Um, you could also specify them, in, in, inline them in the YAML if that suits your need. So basically we are enabling Alert Manager and Prometheus. So the Flux team also provides some, uh, escape, also provides some YAMLs to help you set up Cube Prometheus, right? For, let me increase this just in case it's just, yeah, here. So it has like dashboards for Grafana for you to be able to visualize the metrics. And also, this basically configures, this pod monitor config, configures Prometheus to monitor um, the Flux system, the various controllers under Flux. So yeah, I've already installed that. And I've also installed, I was supposed to show this, but no time. I've also installed TailScale as a subnet router. So basically I'll be able to access internal IPs from my, my laptop. Um, TailScale enables you to do that. You could check it out. You could check out the repository in your time. So I'm able to use, in cluster URL, if you see this, I'm using svc.cluster.local. Um, 
Here is my two scale dashboard. I've added this subnet router. So basically, I'm able to get a direct connection to my cluster without exposing the services. Uh, okay, so I can, I can use this URL, even though I don't have any ingresses set up or anything fancy, right, from my cluster. Mm. Hopefully it should work. Okay, yes. Thankful. Yeah, okay, it's taking a bit. So yeah, we also have, um, we'll also take a look at the Grafana dashboards. Um, Grafana, I already have this open. Having internet issues. Okay, and the last two that I'll be looking at, I will be having a look at today is Pixie. Pixie is an eBPF uh, monitoring tool. Basically, it doesn't require you to install stuff. It's tr it gathers its met metrics using eBPF probes on the kin uh, on the kernel. So basically, it's able to glean some information from your syscall, the syscalls that your application is making and make that visible to you. So you don't need to install, like inject a sidecar to your application or something to route your network through. So um, the, the metrics that Flux exports um, start with GOTK, they're supposed to be coming up now. Let me see. Okay, let me just check that everything is running well here. Yeah, seems to be running okay. Okay, I'll look for the first, it seems the network is taking a minute. Flux. Trying to showcase the Flux dashboard. And lastly, Pixie. Yeah, so this is what Pixie has a really nice UI. This is basically some a map showing because Flux pods co sort of call out to each other. Because the, the customized controller. Okay, I'll just round up. So the customized controller tries to connect to the source controller and stuff. So you'd want to know, Pix is helpful in seeing like if you have any networking issues, like it's able to provide with some of that. You can see like duration that, that things, the duration that your HTTP requests take and stuff like that. So it could be really helpful in debugging. My time is almost up, okay. Yeah, so I'll just show the dashboards. And I also had an alert. So you could also create more complex alerting rules. I had one set up like this is basically supposed to, so maybe you don't want to get your alerts like, cause the notification controller basically forwards it immediately. Because um, your, you might expect your applications to be in a transient state where they are not ready. So you don't want to be alerted immedi immediately. You could use Alert Manager to configure these alerts. Like this is really short, but maybe you'd only want to be alerted if your customizations are in a not ready state, which is basically ready false, in a not ready state for over an hour. Maybe one minute or immediately, you're expecting that, oh, something is still getting set up. It's fine, I don't want an alert for this. So basically you could use alert managers, alert manager for a more complex setup. So yeah, the network is loading. I would have loved to show off the Flux dashboard. But in the meantime, while it's loading, any questions? Okay. Uh, so this is what the Flux dashboard looks like. Um, the controllers, um, I'll go to Costa. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. So basically this shows you the health of the controller. There's one that says Flux cluster stats, which gives you insights to like your reconciliations and how long it's taking, right? You, you'd also want, maybe you're concerned, you want your applications deployed as quickly 
as possible. How long is Flux taking to deploy the different applications? So yeah, I think this is most of it. Uh, we explored the VS Code extension, the notification controller, queue primitive stack, um, tail scale, and Pixie. So in summary, you know, observability is very important. You can, with Flux, you can pick and choose what you, what you need. If you think that the notification controller is sufficient, you just need quick updates on Slack or whatever chat provider you're using, you could use that. You could also layer it on with more complex, with more complex observability solutions like Prometheus, Grafana, and so forth. So I've incre in included various links to the different repositories if you'd want to check it out later. And yeah, I think my time is almost up. Come by the flux, but I'll love to chat and thank you.